What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. It is Padres weekend, and we are here with Jeff Erickson of RotoWire to preview it and break it all down. Jeff, as sort of a uh, a non biased person here, that's not a Dodgers fan or a Padres fan. Does this series mean anything, kind of on a league wide level, in the same way that maybe it has the last few years? Well. That's just the thing is it's supposed to have been a big deal. And last year, the Padres, they, they notoriously, they won that one, the, the se- mid season series. Uh, there was the, li- the, the battle of the librarians and all that, uh, you know, just in terms of like bragging about the series. And then the Dodgers said, okay, that was fun. Good boy. And they yeah. went and just tore away after that there. Um, you, you see that sometimes a lot in baseball where you get this one big regular season series. And then, you know, people kind of forget there's a lot more after. There's yeah. a, there's a lot more after that. And yes, it's a huge series. It's huge. If one team sweeps the other, if, if yeah. there's a four game sweep, it matters, but you know, with the expanded wild card, you know, that it should matter a little bit less, but this is a, this is desperation time for the Padres. Every yeah. series has got to have that sort of heft. Every series has to have that sort of urgency for them right now, and especially because they made a point of not selling off when some of their contemporaries did. Yeah. Yeah, Padres enter this one one game under 500, nine back of the Dodgers in the division, but just four back of your Cincinnati Reds in that wild card spot. And coming into this one, the Padres on a little bit of a good good run here. They've won five of their last six. The Dodgers have won three straight, sweeping the A's. And yes, it was the A's, but they did so dominantly. What you would expect of the Dodgers, and the Dodgers have won three in a row, like I said, four of their last five. And this one... Jeff tonight is going to get underway uh, in exciting fashion. Bobby Miller versus you Darvish is the best pitching matchup we're going to see all weekend. Um, Miller versus Darvish. You mentioned kind of right before we got on how good Darvish has been of late. We're used to this as a Dodgers fan. I hate seeing you Darvish on the mound against us because it feels like he always dominates uh, six and two thirds, one earned six strikeouts against the Dodgers in his one matchup so far this season. What do you like from Miller and Darvish tonight? Well, and Darvish is kind of uh, all over the place, too, because he's had, you know, his last four starts, have, three of them have been dominant. Yeah. The fourth one, the Pirates hit four homers off him because yeah. the Pirates in San Diego, no less. A disastrous series for the uh, P- Padres, by the way, losing two out of three to the Pirates, uh, you know, in San Diego. Um, you know, the thing is, this is that he, he didn't even travel to Colorado. Mm-hmm. They wanted to make sure that he didn't suffer the effects of course just by even being there <laughs> wanted to be ready for this game so i thought that was pretty funny um it's a it's a huge huge game uh, and the thing is the padres made some interesting little bottom of the roster moves some some of the you know little tweaks here and there to try to make this run they you know they didn't hit you know any of the big name guys but yeah. you know you look at you know, G-Man Choi is now in the lineup instead of uh, Matt Carpenter, that that sort of thing. They tried yeah. to find little ways to try to improve their lineup because let's face it, the bottom third, bottom half of this uh, lineup has been the reason why they've probably struggled. Plus, they have they're on this legendary unclutch run. You know, they're plus 75 in run differential, crazy. yet they're 0-10 in extra inning games. That's crazy. I love to see it though. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, uh, I, I, I bet. I bet you do. I mean, it, it's and, and it's it's one of those things where you couldn't like you know you couldn't flip a coin ten times like that. I mean, you, you yeah. if you do that, the thing is the gambler's fallacy though kicks in and thinking, okay, where they're due the they're next due. time. Well, yeah, it, it's just it's yet another coin flip game game if you yeah. get to that. Yeah, Bobby Miller, looking at his numbers, 4.64 ERA in the month of July. He's allowed Mm -hmm. three or more earned runs in six of his last seven starts, which is not the type of stuff you want to see. There is one positive number as I was looking through Miller's stats, and especially I would say from a rookie. In the month of July, 24 strikeouts to just two walks. Yeah. So I like to see the control there. It's 12 strikeouts and no walks in his last two outings. So this feels like a big moment for him. I mean, Miller's been thrown into the fire. The teams that he's had to face already have typically been some of the best teams, but a Friday night game against the Padres um, in Los Angeles, this feels like a big one with you Darvish on the other side. So I'm encouraged to see kind of how that plays out. As far as betting for tonight, Jeff, I was looking at some trends. Um, The total, this whole series will be fun to watch. The Padres come into this game having gone under in seven of their last eight. And the overs have hit in only 39% of their games this season. On the flip side, the Dodgers are hitting overs 59% of the time. So you've got one team that goes under 60% of the time and the other team goes over 60% of the time. Um, Are there any bets on money line, run line, 
props or anything that, that jump out to you? I've got a couple hitters against you, Darvish, that I like, but I'll go to you first for anything that you like. So I, I'd first like first five under. Okay. Uh, I think that's, a, that's a good one here just because – Bobby Miller, usually he's going to go five. He's going to go yeah. six, maybe tops. Uh, I, I still have some trust issues with the Dodger bullpen, but yeah. it, it's been better late. We, we can all acknowledge that. But at the same time, I, you know, I, I don't want him going that third time through the order. Darvish, I think, is you know, in pretty decent form as well. So I, I think I like unders as far as that goes. Okay. Um, for the, you know, we'll see for the series that uh, it might change here and there. Uh, the other thing is Miller's been better on the road than he has been at home. So yeah. I, I, I think that also is a little bullet point in favor of an under bet tonight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dodgers, it's funny to see they're actually underdogs tonight. You can get plus money on the Dodgers, yes. which makes sense when you look at you Darvish, a couple numbers that I thought were interesting is two guys on the Dodgers lineup who have actually hit you Darvish really, really well. The first is Freddie Freeman. No surprises there. He's sitting 320 with a pair of home runs against you, Darvish, in his career. But the other one that's a little more interesting is David Peralta. Has yes. a 385 career batting average against you, Darvish, with three home runs. Uh, you can parlay those two, Dar uh, Peralta to get a hit and Freeman to get a hit and basically get even money out of it. So that's an interesting one. Um, I couldn't find a, a many Peralta props, but if you can get like over one and a half total bases, there might be some value there. But if you're going to go on the Dodgers side, those are those are a couple guys that I think at least are interesting um, to uh, to bet on if you want to stick with the Dodgers side of things. Rotowire has a, da a daily lineups page, and one of the links from that is uh, matchups to target and avoid. And I saw I, I was look I was looking there, and yep, those are the two. Peralta and Freeman. Go. On the flip side, there are like six matchups to avoid for Dodgers. Um, we'll see what JD Martinez's status is over the weekend, but he was one of them that's has hasn't hit for average at least for against Darvish. He has had a little bit of power, but Mookie has had his struggles against Darvish. Max Muncie has really struggled against Darvish, yeah. so uh, twelve Ks and twenty eight plate appearance, uh, twenty eight at bats. So that that's a tough one. Even like Will Smith has struggled against Darvish. Yeah, well, and it's interesting you you mentioned the under. Something to watch. Muncie left last night's game. They said it was a contusion that their x-rays were negative. So mm -hmm. I suppose it's possible he's in today's lineup. J.D. Martinez has missed a couple of days. There's some sort of expectation he might be back today. But if you bet the under now, um, that might be the time to do it. Basically, you're getting even money with a total of eight. I mean, that's a really low number. But maybe it's the Dodgers team total you're going under on. Because if Martinez is out of the lineup and Max Muncie is out of the lineup uh, against a righty, it, it could get dicey down there at the bottom of the lineup. If they move Will Smith to DH again, um, yep. that puts Austin Barnes in the lineup. Um, we're expecting Miguel Rojas to be in the lineup. So some guys that maybe you'd want to stay away from in the Dodgers lineup. Uh, moving on to Saturday, speaking of unders, by the way, Blake Snell on the mound for the Padres against officially listed to be determined. The expectation, I think, if I had to guess, is Ryan Yarbrough. You said Rotowire has that as the projection as well. Um, the Dodger might be making his debut Saturday now that Emmett Sheehan appeared in last night's game, getting himself a four inning save. But the storyline, regardless, is Blake Snell. Um, I hadn't been paying close attention, but he's been the best pitcher in baseball for basically two, almost two and a half months. Since May 26th, he's thrown 69 innings and has allowed just, f excuse me, allowed just five earned runs. He has 102 strikeouts over that time and just 38 hits allowed. That's a 0.65 ERA while striking out 13.3. Let me repeat that. 69 innings, just 13, 38 hits allowed. 69 innings, 102 strikeouts, and just five earned runs. Incredible stuff from him. And he was good against the Dodgers back in May as well. Six innings, two earned runs. If there's a weakness, he walks a lot of guys. That's yep. kind of the Dodgers MO. So if you want to feel sort of optimistic about getting to Snell, A, it would be the history of the Dodgers having a good um, – reputation against him getting hits in big moments maybe is a better way of putting it but also if he walks maybe the Dodgers can be patient and get to him that way yeah 37 walks in that span that you mentioned uh and you know it, it's his you know even in his this really elite stretch where he's he's got a 0.65 ERA his whip is 109 so yeah you you know usually it, and for the season it's still like at 1.29 which is about commensurate with where he goes for the you know over the course of his career you know typically snell has had a hard time going deeper into games because yeah. of his control issues uh that's just part of who he is uh but he, he seems to have found something there that the padres have found something there uh, with, with working with him um they get six strong from him and now that their bullpen is a little bolstered 
maybe that 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 formula kind of works. Robert Suarez is, ba- is back for them. That's one of the big guys for that team. Uh, okay. They've had a really hard time getting games to Josh Hader. Um, getting Suarez helps. Uh, they just went out and added Scott Barlow as well. So they're stretching out their bullpen, trying to shorten these games a little bit. I think it's a formula that, that, that can absolutely work. Yeah, I think according to War, they've got like the 19th best bullpen in the league. But over the last 30 days, that's climbed up to 12th. So yep. trending in the right direction in addition to that. Again, Ryan Yarbrough expected to start for the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, I'll just say this. You can look at his numbers and feel however you want. I think it was Josh Thomas um, who covers Dodger prospect stuff. He tweeted out what Yarbrough's stats against the AL Central are and what they are against everybody else. And let's just say uh, not encouraging for Dodgers fans how that has looked. It's like two something against the AL Central and seven something against everybody else. So Saturday will be his his debut. And speaking of trade deadlines, Sunday I'm calling the trade deadline bowl because it's Lance Lynn versus Rich Hill. And I know that hurts Dodger fans to hear Rich Hill pitching against the Dodgers. Not only that, but pitching for the Padres. This will be a big test, I think, for Lynn. Lynn pitched pretty well, seven innings, three earned. Yes, it was the A's. Yes, it was three solo home runs. But as I went on a tirade on our post-game show, (laughs) Dodger fans aren't allowed to be mad about seven innings and three earned runs. Like, I don't care how they come or who they come against. Those are desperately needed numbers, and Lance Lynn gave them to him. He was getting swing and miss. I think he's only going to get better. So that's on the Dodgers' side. On the Padres' side, Rich Hill has allowed two or more earned runs in 10 in a row three plus and eight of those 10 he had a 5.7 era in july and speaking of whip a 1.70 whip in the month of july so if there's a pitching matchup that you're looking at this is definitely the one for the dodgers that you feel like you have to come away with a victory on sunday yeah it was a little bit of a surprise to see the padres uh, trade for hill but i think they're they were desperate for innings too they were doing a lot of uh, bullpen starts and so he, his best ability was availability. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's also, he, it, it's good that we have another team for his immaculate grid uh, page there. So we yeah, got that go. going for us. Uh, but yeah, um, I think Choi was the better ad in that trade. I think he'll, they're hoping they give him five or six, yeah. but, and here's where going out and getting two right-handed hitters means a lot for the Dodgers that they can have a couple of guys they can tactically deploy. You know, yeah. Ahmed Rosario, who noticed he's not starting against righties. He, he's nope. just in there to face lefties. That's what he does. He does he does it well, and that, that's a good fit. Obviously, Kike Hernandez is the same way. I mean, it's another situation there where they're going to they're gonna max up these matchups, and I, I, ex- I expect those two guys would be interesting props. Yeah, and, and just looking at the way this series plays out, I, I come back to Friday and say, man, if the Dodgers can get Darvish out of the game, with six innings at the very most pitched because then you're going to Snell on Saturday. Who's not a go deep into games guy. Rich Hill is not a go deep into games guy on Sunday. You could really tax the bullpen early in this series. Saturday and Sunday could be days where you're able to pounce on a weekend bullpen. So something to watch there that does lead to Monday. This is the weird wraparound series where you've got a Monday day game between the Dodgers and Padres, Tony Gonsolin versus Seth Lugo. Gonsolin trying to stack encouraging performances. Again, I know it was the A's, but five innings, one earned run. We'll take it from Tony Gonsolin. Lugo, on the other hand, has been good. Three and a half ERA, 1.19 whip, um, striking out 24 across his last three starts and been going deep into games. He's getting them like six plus, I think it was 20 innings over his last three starts. So good stuff from him there. On the flip side, StatCast, not Seth Lugo's friend. He's in the bottom 35%. In hard hit rate, exit velocity, barrel rate, expected basically everything short of ERA, whiff rate, all of that is well below average for Seth Lugo. So um, again, an interesting matchup between you know two guys who their their expected numbers versus their actual numbers. Those two things aren't always in alignment between those two guys, and so something to keep an eye on here in yeah. Sunday's game between Gonsolin and Lugo. Absolutely. And I, I am going to be, I, I will bench, bench Gonsolin in my fantasy league just because yeah. of the current form. You know, I, I used him against the A's and okay. Yeah. That, that he he's, he's at that point right now. He's yeah. a mix and match guy, unfortunately. And uh, this is where, you know, the Dodgers depth issues are really kicking in that they can't make Gonsolin like just a three inning ace or something like yeah. that. Let him go all out. Uh, they did that with Sheehan though the other night. So we'll see. I mean, maybe this is, you know, getting, you know, just getting that extra arm and it's too bad. They didn't get a second one. We, yeah. we won't belabor that point. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it gives them some uh, options that they didn't have earlier this year. But yeah, this is, this is one where, you know, Lugo was a hero for the rock uh, for the Padres this week against the Rockies long rain delay and then throw seven uh, in Coors field. I mean, that 
that saved them for this that whole entire series. Yeah, and Lugo was a guy the Dodgers were reportedly interested in signing in the offseason as a potential starter. The Padres end up beating him to it. But as we run through this again, I just keep coming back to tonight, Friday night's game. Yeah. Bobby versus Hugh Darvish is so important for the Dodgers. You're not expected to win. You're the underdogs. And yet, if you can get to Darvish, can, can you get his inning pitch to start with the five so that you tax the bullpen early in this series? And heck, if the Dodgers could win tonight... Then you're looking at Saturday against Snell, Yarborough versus Snell. No, you know, it's going to be a bigger underdog. That's probably going to be like a plus 140 for the Dodgers, I would guess. But then as you get to Sunday, Lance Lynn versus Rich Hill, you feel like you have the advantage there. And then Gonsolin versus Lugo. I know Lugo's numbers have been good, but I feel like that's at least closer to an even money type of matchup. If if Miller versus you, Darvish is even money for the Dodgers. I think Gonsolin versus Lugo, the Dodgers are probably favored in. And so tonight is such a big one. Not even... I mean, you'd love to see them win, but even if you can just get to Darvish, build some momentum, the offense needs to get rolling for this weekend. Um, do you see this, Jeff, just as we close this one out? Do you see this being like a 2-2? Do you like the Dodgers' odds here to maybe take three out of four, or is this a one where things aren't stacked up right for the Dodgers and they might find themselves on the losing end? Well, you got I, I, I think Sheehan actually was huge. He saved that bullpen last night, you know, going the four that he did. Because uh, the Padres are super well-rested. They, they were off yesterday. They were also had an 11 1 win on Wednesday. So they're, they're key bullpen guys. They're all rested. I agree. Yeah. This is so important to get to that bullpen on Friday night, get them going because, you know, and get the start, you know, wearing on them a little bit because they're too well rested right now. So I'm yeah. going to say 2 2. I think uh, even at like it, a loss on Friday is okay as long as they make everybody work hard. Yeah. That's the way yeah. I, I view it as if, if it's, if, if Darvish goes seven and they like, then it goes Suarez, Hater, easy, easy. And, they off you go, then it probably sets the tone for the rest of the series. Yeah, we'll see. That's Jeff Erickson. He's a senior editor over at Rotowire. Jeff, tell them about Rotowire and um, where they can find you and what's going on. You can check out all of our trade deadline reactions, our updated prospect rankings, all that. You can go to rotowire.com slash pod. We're doing a special until August 13th where anybody who signs up for a free trial and there's no credit card required for that. We'll donate a dollar to Fantasy Cares. Uh, organization goes out and buys Christmas presents for underprivileged kids. Uh, so uh, every free trial, rotowire.com slash pod, and we'll donate a dollar. Love it. You can also find Jeff on Fantasy Sports Today on Sirius XM as well. And check out all the stuff over at Rotowire. Again, it's it's about, I was just telling him, I was checking my fantasy stuff this morning. I go on Yahoo and what do I see? It's Rotowire that's giving me updates on Clayton Kershaw and even quoting Matthew Moreno of DodgerBlue.com. So right. it's a, a win all around. We got good Kershaw news in there. We got Matthew Moreno quoted and Rotowire is the one providing it. So win, win, win. For me appreciate everybody for joining us as always if you're a podcast person please we've been plugging it check us out on apple spotify or google search dodger heads you will find us there um, we'd love to have you subscribe rate and review enjoy the rest of your day folks and as always go dodgers